UBS is very pleased to host tonight's event, Neurodiversity and Tech, along with Otacon. I'm truly proud of what we at UBS do in communities all around the world. One of those things that we created six years ago was an autism roundtable. And what we did is we brought together scholars, people working every day in the field, and philanthropists who had an interest in autism. And over the past six years, we brought together people who have worked to make an impact, to put dollars to work, to create better outcomes, better communities, and to make the lives of those who are uh, on the spectrum uh, much better. We believe in diversity and inclusion in the workplace at UBS, and that also includes neurodiversity. We have hired neurodiverse talent in areas where attention to detail, a systematical way of working, and pattern recognition are important, which has led us to productivity gains. We promote, yet we need others to help us promote and support system that allows those who are neurodiverse to live and work as themselves. As employers, we need to look at workplace functionality and find the individuals who fit the roles best, which may be someone who thinks in an alternative way. Neurodiverse individuals are wired differently, and they can bring these unique perspectives to a job or to a role. The programming has gone very well for us, and what we decided to do was expand it to other places in the community. Recently in Nashville, we hosted a lunch on autism and innovation at Vanderbilt University. Like tonight, there were panel discussions which led to other Nashville-based businesses hiring those who are neurodiverse. We need to continue to find the right people, to find the best candidates who fit the right roles. As a firm, we are passionate about the opportunity. Tonight, as you heard, we have a number of wonderful speakers who are here. And I'd like now to introduce Stephanie McKay, who's the Chief Information Officer at Columbus. Thank you. Stephanie. Good evening. Thanks for having me. This is such a great crowd. I really appreciate you all turning out, and thank you for your comments and kind of setting the context about autism and uh, neurodiversity. So I've been asked to um, speak tonight about the Hub of Opportunity. So first I want to tell you about Columbus Community Center. We're um, a service provider here in um, Salt Lake County. We just celebrated in 2018 our 50th anniversary. We've really been quite cutting edge, and I think we've been cutting edge, and then we looked back and realized we were being cutting edge over the years. Um, but we started with eight uh, students in the old Columbus School, that's where we came from. And um, now we serve 644 people. And about five, six years ago, um, as we were starting the Hub of Opportunity, we also became aware of this great need to serve individuals um, on the spectrum. And we started digging into the statistics and all that kind of stuff, and it really became evident um, when you, know, you have families calling you pretty much on a daily basis what what we what's out there for our children that you have to you have to create something right and you have to bring the community together to do that um, so there's kind of two stories here I think the hub was uh, <laughs> we kind of first conceptualized it seven years ago when our, our group homes like we can it was going to cost a fortune that widened a hallway and I had a hissy fit and it was You've got to build something where you build from the bottom up, accounting for 20% of the population, and that's how many people in the general population has a disability. And it evolved from an idea of kind of a campus style, maybe small, and um, when we open it in April, May, it's going to be 200,000 square feet, and it's going to have 157 units in it, and 20% of the people living in the hub will 
be, it will have some level of disability. So it's one of the first in the country to really start with the premise that you've got to build from the ground up for the people who have the least access. And I don't have to tell you, this is, you know, the population is, we have the highest um, unemployment rate, just in general with disabilities. We have, they have the highest rate of poverty and uh, highest rate of social isolation. And then when you start looking at autism and you're looking at an 85% unemployment rate, and you're looking at you know, a generation of young adults kind of coming into this world, 2% of our population on the spectrum, then you have to redefine what's normal and you have to call it neurodiverse so that you can start with neurodiversity and, and just go through the full spectrum of life, right? And so the hub of opportunity was really built uh, with that in mind. It should be around 50 years from now and still be quite a relevant building. It gave us the opportunity to, you very rarely, those of you in the nonprofit world know this, you very rarely have the opportunity to build a building and create a program at the same time. So as part of this, uh, the Hub of Opportunity, we have the Next for Autism Center, which is, just it out to you here. It's this corner right here. Um, so the, the magic of the Hub is it's a transit-oriented development. Uh, we purposely uh, chose this piece of land and worked with ETA to secure it because it gives total access to um, the Wasatch Front for most people who don't have access to public transportation. And so we're going to have 5,700 square feet, Christy, is that right? Dedicated to training and a program that's going to go in there and it will be a lit workspace with uh, apartments in it. It's, it's a magical corner. I, I'll give Joel credit for this. I call him my, my Harvey, you know, my invisible or about it, because I don't, he calls me, I don't really see him that often, but he, when he makes the connection, it's amazing. So having the STEM Action Center as our neighbor to the west, and Otacon as our neighbor to the north, this corner will be world famous, I think. Well, I know it will be world famous, because we will be opening the world to children as young as kindergarten through the STEM Action Center, um, all the way through uh, end of life for some of our clients who will be living in the hub. And um, it, it, it's just, it's magical. And sometimes I think that Salt Lake, it's one of the few places where you can make magic with a building and with a bunch of people and some great programs. So I'm very excited about that. I left on the table, most of the tables. Um, the other thing that uh, really I think is important about this, uh, we need to recognize and really take care of these young adults coming out of school. But you also have to realize that it's about economic impact and empowerment. So at the same time as we were building the building, we, we have not been busy having Christy. Uh, our CEO over here. We were building the building, we were doing a, um, uh, we had a success grant with the Swenson Impact Center. Um, we tried to figure out why the players weren't hiring, and um, we were developing this program at the same time. So it's just been this magic, and then we have uh, people like Otacon come in and find us, and, and so the needs there, and the um, uh, if you take a minute just to look at the numbers, if we're not putting these young people to work, um, it's costing Utah $102 million a year. Um, we put these kids to work and we're putting $121 million back into the economy. So it's, um, it's pretty profound when you start looking at the social impact of family and, um, and how it just enriches our lives. I just came back from a conference in San Diego, I was going to bring down on the beach. Um, <laughs> kind of. I was with a bunch of economists talking about artificial um, intelligence and uh, monetary <laughs> policy. Um, they, they were going in a different direction, but they were really talking about this huge uh, paradigm shift that we're going through in what's going to happen to the workforce and um, because of artificial intelligence. And I was taking notes like mad because I realized, um, I mean, I keep telling my colleagues, uh, my economist friends this, and they don't always listen, but they eventually do, that 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 shift into artificial intelligence and technology is really going to be ripe for this uh, generation of uh, all young adults. Um, they're going to they're, they're be born with cell phones in their hands. 
and um, and you know federal monetary policy isn't quite keeping up with that. Some of the uh, um, uh, large corporations that were um, represented at, the, at this event um, aren't quite keeping up with where they're going to find that workforce. But I think we can show them. That's the beauty of this project. And um, we just uh, we don't want the, the, these young adults to be displaced. We want we want to take advantage of their neurodiversity, and we want to make sure that they're working because they have to take care of us as we age too. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and I want to just end with one, since I know there's um, some people in here who do uh, um, work around uh, asset management and things like that. And I, as I was sitting in the audience yesterday or on Saturday at this conference um, or Monday, I guess it was. Like I said, I'm still in San Diego. Uh, a colleague showed me an, uh, an article that just came out that the uh, city of Chicago just um, reevaluated their asset managers and they got rid of 40% of them because they did not meet the criteria of inclusion and diversity. And often, disability is not included in that. Only 4% of corporations really specifically include disabilities in their uh, inclusion policies. And so I was really thrilled to see that. Um, that corporations and, and someone like the city of uh, Chicago actually is the, the, on the scoring criteria that was 25% of their scoring criteria, and that's why 40% of their asset managers were out the door. So I think um, there's a lot going on at a lot of levels, but in the end, it's people in this room and other rooms like this, and our children, and our parents, and the people who care. They're really going to make that successful and make sure that this next generation really thrives. And they're going to do it in the hub with all of our partners.